Welcome everybody, my name's Stan, and on behalf of Crosslight Software, I'll be giving you a tutorial on Trim. Trim's the calculation part of the software package SRIM. It's mainly used to calculate the dopant profiles after ion implantation. These dopant profiles can then be used by Crosslight Software. Trim is a Monte Carlo simulation. It treats all the target materials as amorphous. In most cases, the simulation results of trim fit the experiments of Crystal Target very well. Let's begin our tutorial. First of all, we need to log in to the official site of SRIM, www.srim.org. Then click Download SRIM 2013. There's two versions of SRIM, Standard and Professional. For this tutorial, we need the Standard version. Instructions for installation are on this website. It's pretty straightforward. Let's follow the instructions. First, let's put the installation program on the desktop. Set up a new file and name it as SRIM2013. Then move the installation program to the folder and rename it. We're going to call it SRIM2013.exe. Alright, now let's run the installation. The program is actually a compressed package. The installation process is only an extraction. Alright, now the SRIM program is installed. Let's open the executable file. This brings up the starting interface of SRIM. Since we only use trim, click on trim calculation. Unfortunately, our program actually froze here. It's a small bug of this program. The developers of this program only use English for non-Unicode program. If your computer system is not in English, it'll stop like this. In order to solve this problem, First of all, we need to close the program. There. Alright, let's bring up the control panel. Now we're looking for region and language. Under the panel of administrative, click on the button of change system locale to change the current language for non-Unicode programs. Here you can see I chose language as Chinese previously. Therefore I need to change it to English. Let's choose English Canada. Click on OK. To change the system language, we'll have to restart the computer. Click on Restart. After restarting your computer, let's reopen the program. Click on Trim Calculation. If everything's okay, we should see the setup window of trim. The setup window is divided into three parts. The first part is ion data, the second part is target data, and the last is the special parameters for the simulation and the buttons for running, saving, and etc. Let's begin with ion data. 
In the ion data section, you can choose the type of trim calculation. For ion implantation, we'll just choose the default option. Ion distribution and quick calculation of damage. Since it's the fastest type, we don't need too much detail of implantation, but only the final dopant distribution profile. Click on the PT button. Here we choose the implant ion. Note that this program can only choose a single element for implantation. We can't choose molecules. Here I chose boron for demonstration purposes. For parameters of ion data, atomic number and mass is default as implant ion. We can change implantation energy and angle as we want. For energy, it's default as 10 kilo electron volts. Here I'll change it to 50. The angle of incidence here is the ion implantation angle that deviates from the normal direction of the target surface. The second part now is the target data. The default target material of the program is set as a single layer. If your target material is multi-layered, click on Add New Layer. You can edit the layer name here. For simplicity, I only set one layer, but you can set multi multiple layers if you need to. On the right side of this section, it's the setting for target material. If your target material is a single element, like silicon, Click on the PT button and choose silicon. However, if your target material is complicated, first you can search from the compound dictionary. The program has included various types of target materials. For example, under common implantation compounds, there are many types of glass, and there are also many types of metals and alloys. Here I chose Gallium AS Crystal. You can see the messy code here. It's also a small bug of trim, but don't worry about that, we'll skip. Click on Add to Current Layer. You'll see the elements here. Delete the first column, which is the one we set as silicone at first. Row, sorry. If you can't find the target materials in the compound dictionary, you can still manually enter the material. Because Trim treated all the target materials as amorphous, we can edit the target material as we want without considering details in the crystal structure. For example, I'd like, I'd like to set the target material as hafnium oxide. First, I'll add the HF element in the target material. Then, click on Add New Element to Layer. Add the oxygen element. The atomic stoichiometry should be 1 to 2. Then, change the density value to the density of hafnium oxide. It's a critical parameter make sure you put the correct value. The density of hafnium oxide is 9.68 grams per cubic centimeter. The width value is the thickness of your target material. The unit of the thickness is default as angstrom. You can change units as you want. Lastly, it's the special parameters for simulation. For example, this value means to save our simulation results at every 10,000 ions. 
Since the software uses Monte Carlo simulation, the number of ion setting here is not related to the dose of ion implantation. It's only a parameter of the simulation. The higher the number is, the more precise the result will be. The default number is 999999. You can increase the numbers you want. In this tutorial, we'll keep the default number unchanged. The advantage of the auto saving is that if your computer accidentally shuts down, you can still keep the latest results in the temporary file. Alright, now that we've set all the initial parameters, click on save and run to begin the simulation. Once the simulation begins, a new window will pop up. This button can pause and continue the simulation process. On the panel in the upper left corner, it's the simulation information. Completed means how many ions have implanted into the target. The position of every atom is decided by the Monte Carlo calculation. Theoretically, the program simulates where the atoms should stop when bombarded into the target material. The plot window displays the depth of the target as the x-coordinate. Here, the range is from 0 to, to 10,000 ang angstrom. For the meaning other options, you can learn by yourself through clicking the question mark. One thing I'd like to mention is ion distribution. This figure here, because this figure displays the dopant profile in real time. Anyways, the x coordinate is target depth. The Y coordinate, however, it is not concentration. Instead, it's a ratio of concentration over dose. The reason is since the target material is amorphous, the distribution of the implanted ions is independent of dose. The concentration of dopant will scale linearly according to the implant dose. Therefore, we need to do additional data processing when we get the final results. By multiplying the dose we want, we'll obtain the final simulation result, dopant concentration profile. If we want a more precise simulation result, there's another parameter we need to revise. Let's reopen ion distribution figure. Since we only care about the info of the red peak, there's a lot of blank info here. Trim only saves 100 data points of the final results, which means you'll get a lot of zero values in your result. If the target depth range is too large, 80% of the final results will be useless. Therefore, we need to change the parameters in the plot window. click on change trim. You can see some of the parameters turn yellow. Those are the values you can change during the simulation including element, energy, and angle. The parameters we need to change here is in the plot window. By referring to the ion distribution figure, we'll see that the valid data ends around 3000 angstrom. Start. All right. Now click on End Edit. Restart the simulation and click on the Continue button. 
If you open the ion distribution figure, you'll see useful data points cover almost the whole target depth. The XY longitudinal figure is the two-dimensional distribution of the data point. Meanwhile, ion distribution figure is one-dimensional distribution. Normally, we only need one-dimensional distribution of a dopant profile. When the color of the bar changes from gray to red, simulation will end. To make the simulation quicker, we can simply close windows we don't need. Now the simulation's finished. When the simulation finishes, the program will pop up a window to let you save the result. If you accidentally close the window, you can save the results by clicking on the F button. You can also verify the simulation results by opening the ion distribution figure. You can see that the dopant profile here is smooth, which means we've entered enough ion numbers. If you find that your dopant profile is rough, you probably need to increase the ion number next time you do a simulation. You can click on any F button here, but it makes no difference. Choose the directory that you want to save the results in. Here I'm going to save it in the installation folder. Now let's go to the installation folder. We can see the two files that are, were just generated, range and tdata. These are the profiles that can be imported into Crosslight software. tdata keeps the information of the simulation process including energy and target materials. The final simulation result of dopant profile is saved in the range text folder. You can see the depth and boron columns here. When using the data, don't forget that the value in the boron column is not boron concentration. To obtain concentration data, you need to multiply this value with the dose that you want. Therefore, by using ion implantation simulation, we obtain dopant profiles that then may be used and, and import it into Crosslight. And that about wraps up our trim tutorial. Don't forget to check out our other software tutorials, and on behalf of Crosslight Software, have a good one.